Well, a large box of apples was delivered to my door last week, along with a message that brought me close to tears and made me extremely angry. Because the apples came from a small farm near Ceres, and the message was that the dams were dry, the land was cracked, and the trees were drying, dying. And um, as a consequence, they had to harvest far too many apples for market, and so they were being gifted. That made me particularly angry because it happened only two or three hours before I heard from Parliament that the Parliamentary Committee had been told that 50,000 farm workers in the Western Cape were likely to be retrenched because of the drought. A drought that was not unavoidable, but a tragedy that was certainly totally unavoidable. And I say that because <coughs> The economic and social consequences of 50,000 job losses among the poorest workers among the poor is too horrific to even contemplate. It's enough to make anyone weep, enough to make all of us, I think, very angry. And I say it's avoidable, not because I'm a prophet, but I'm a journalist and it made me go back in my files to July 1993 and I discovered something I'd written about how Cape Town was running short of water while sitting on one of the biggest aquifers in, Af in Africa that was unfortunately heavily polluted largely by informal settlements and that was before the major influx that has come in over recent decades. At the time there were other reports too about possible solutions that were being put forward by engineers etc including one about towing breakaway icebergs from the Antarctic into Gordon's Bay to bring in fresh water. But what happened? Those people, the elite, the politicians, who are supposed to look after our interests, our representatives, did nothing. Successive administrations did absolutely nothing about this. And I think that it underlines the importance of the public being given information so we can actually act, because we can no longer rely on these people. We need accurate information. And we need, in order to get that, to support those media workers who are truly acting as the eyes and ears of the public at large, giving us the information. Um, if, we had that inform if we hadn't had that information, we wouldn't know about the bungling, about the incompetence, and about the degree of control exercised over state institutions by what amounts to a gangster cabal. All of that we wouldn't know had it not been for the information we get. And it made me think back to 2013, when the ANC majority in Parliament passed the notorious secrecy bill, the Protection of State Information Bill. All it required was the President's signature. But trade unions, religious groups, human rights organizations and others came out in mass numbers. And that was stopped. Had that bill been passed, I doubt we would know what we know now about the bungling and incompetence resulting in the sort of tragedy we're having in the Western Cape now, or about the criminal activities at governmental level. So I think it is vital, it is beholden on all of us, to support those media workers, and also to try not to become in desensitized to all of this, but to try to gather the information together within our communities, within our organizations, discuss, debate, sort out the wheat from the chaff, and then, perhaps, as some of the trade unions are now calling for, mass mobilization. But mass mobilization on its own is merely a matter of perhaps a safety valve. March them up to the top of the hill and march them down again. No, it needs to be informed. So let us hope that we can actually get together to try to dig ourselves out of this very deep hole that we have all been plummeted into by gangsters, by incompetence, and by bungling. Anyhow, that will be the focus, I think, of my Inside Labour column, which you can access on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow, and a version of which will appear in the City Press business section on Sunday. Until then, it's over to you. Let's hear from you. Let's hear what you think at editorfin24.com. That's who you send it to.